Hi guys, I am finally in Scotland. So I arrived here last night um, at probably about five, six o'clock. Um, I got here. And then I had to set up my tent and get some dinner. So it was a really, really crazy day yesterday. I got a flight from London to Glasgow. And then, which is like a city in Scotland, and then I had to wait five hours just sitting around in in um, in the airport. And then two hours on a coach here, and I finally rocked up last night. It was hammering it down as soon as I got off the coach. So quickly I had to put a jacket on and just hike up to this campsite. So I'll show you in a minute what it looks like. It is so nice. I got off the bus and I was completely speechless. The mountains here are crazy. I've never seen anything like it. So, yeah, and then I had to set up my tent and everything before it got dark. And luckily it wasn't raining when I was setting it up, which is always good. Um, so, yeah. It's going to be a really, really good trip. I decided to stay the night at the campsite just to get myself sorted out, just figure out what I'm doing, get just settle in a little bit. And I was pretty knackered last night, so trying to find somewhere to camp just while camp last night would have been a challenge, especially that it was getting dark and it was raining a lot. So, yeah. So I'm going to walk up today, get some breakfast from the campsite. I'm carrying about eight days of food in my pack and I'm spending two weeks here. So the other days I'm just going to have to get food where I can. Obviously I wouldn't have been able to carry two weeks worth of food so this campsite is a, um, a lifesaver really. So I'm going to get breakfast at the CAF at the campsite and I'm going to stay another night here as well just so I can plan what, what I'm doing tomorrow, get a rough idea of the area. But yeah, it's absolutely stunning. I'll give you a view now of what it looks like. This is the campsite I'm staying at. We've got a lot of facilities here. And obviously surrounded by mountains. This is the campsite area. There's a little bit bit of grass up top as well. Yeah, trying to find a spot last night was tricky because the floor is just like this. It's just soaked everywhere or it's uneven. So I went under here. I've got a bit of shelter from the trees as well. Because the wind was coming from that direction. Got my Vango Banshee Pro 200. That was really that stayed up lovely last night. It's my first time using the tent. So yeah, I'm really impressed with how it was. It was windy in the night, it rained all night as well. Stayed up. I pegged it in so well. Put all the guy lines out as well just in case. It's just I'm not gonna risk it. And I even put a few rocks down. So yeah, that is where I'm staying tonight. 
and where I stayed last night. There was one other guy here last night, um, just camped up there. And um, yeah, he was really nice. He's doing a trail from Glasgow to Fort William, which I think it was like 100 miles, I'm not too sure. But he's hiking that and he was staying at all the campsites along the way. And I think he's he hasn't got too far to go now. But he was telling me some tips for camping here and where to go and what's nice to see around here. And there's like a mountain over there that's worth a climb because of, because of the views. I'm just doing my first little hike. First time since I've been in Scotland. I'm just going up this mountain that's near the campsite. So I'm not going too far. And I've just got my day pack with me. Already I've seen a stag just down there. I just can't believe how pretty it is. Crazy. So next to me is a ski slope um, that you can go up and down. This campsite's great, it's got a lot of things around here. So yeah, I'm just going on a little hike to explore. Hopefully I might see some better views when I get higher um, and then I'm gonna come back to the campsite later This is my tent situation. Got my kit, sleeping bag, and my vegetables out there. I've got my boots and my other bag. And then I've just got gear stacked around me. So, yeah, this, this is, I wouldn't say this was a two man tent. Maybe if you're squishing in, um, you get by. But this is enough for one person and their gear. Well, night guys, that is the end of day two.
alternative road. Um, so that is the start, the official start of my hike. So down here is where I was set up and you can see it's flooding so I decided to come up here my tent and looked at my view this morning so you can't get a better morning view than this absolutely stunning yeah so today's plan I'm gonna hike a little more and then uh, yeah I'm basically just doing it on how I feel hiking on how I'm feeling really not on meeting a certain deadline or routine I'm just that's what I'm kind of stepping away from and coming here it's just going with the flow being free sort of thing so yeah I'm gonna hike till I find a nice spot until I feel a bit tired then I'm gonna set up my tent again um, but yeah this morning I've got porridge on the menu that is what my diet consists of now. I um, weighed out sachets of porridge before I came and I uh, get a bag of that with like walnuts and raisins in. So that is what's my breakfast for most days or pretty much every day. So I'm going to get some water from the stream for my porridge and just to drink. Um, and make breakfast. I just admire the views. And I also need to sort out my tent pole as well. I couldn't really explain it yesterday because it was really windy. But I was setting up my tent and it's obviously got, I'll show you now, it's got a pole here and a pole that runs through there and they all interlink and I was doing it and as it was really windy I think there was a lot of pressure and force on the poles and it ended up just snapping here you can kind of see where it's gone and um, yeah so I might have to put some tape on that or something but apart from that, I haven't had any problems with the tent. This is the Van Gogh Banshee Pro 200. So where the ground's really rocky and I can't get my peg in, I've just put stones there instead. Just to support it a little bit more. So I'm back in my tent now, these were the bags I was on about, I weighed it out before I came and um, I'm trying to think of the measurement now, you think I know because I did about 10 of them, um, yeah so I put raisins and walnuts in for extra calories and I've just put them in these little bags and um, added little sachet of sugar as well so I'm going to add water with this my mum 
said that it tastes like glue. When I said I'm taking water with them, because you're meant to use milk, um, it tastes like glue. So, yeah, that's promising. Love the support. <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, yeah, apparently it tastes like glue, but I guess it's better than nothing. I'll see what it tastes like. I tried some when I was back home and I was fine with it. It didn't taste too bad. So, and I'm hungry now, so it's going to taste even better. So I'm going to put this in my pot. I brought this. Put that in there and put it on, place it on the stove. Porridge is on. Doing it in my vestibule because it's too windy outside. So these are the mini gas stoves that I got. Um, I had a big, big gas bottle. I went to get on my flight. They said I wasn't allowed it, so I had to get rid of it. And I was like, oh no, like, what am I going to do? Because this is how I'm cooking my food. So then I got off at Glasgow once I did my flight and I called the campsite I was staying at to see if they sold gas but also actually fit the stove. They didn't sell gas so I had to get a taxi to the town centre to a camping shop to buy some gas bottles and then I decided to get three just in case. And then, yeah, that was happy days. I was so lucky that I got gas bottles that fitted my stove um, in time for my coach to get to Glencoe. Bon appetit! So that's my porridge mix. So I've just set up my tent as you can see, I had to set it up in the rain, it's been raining pretty much all today, all today again, um, but it stopped raining now, got a stunning location again, and it stopped raining so yeah that's always great. I'm just going to have a bar now, one of these cliff bars. Um, eat that. Just admire the views. It's I can't get over how pretty it is. But yeah, it was really, really tipping it down earlier. My bag um, is soaked, both of them. Mainly the little blue one. It, the water must have just seeped through the cover. But it's all good. I just can't believe how nice it is. The walk was pretty tough. It's mainly uphill. And with that pack, it, it does, you do feel it quite a bit. So, yeah, I haven't walked too far. Just, I come across this place and I wanted to stop. Because further down is, it's just like that. You can't camp there. Sky, I'll carry you home, home to the mountain near. And soon, my friend, you'll see them again. The ones you left behind. The ones you left behind. And I'll sing. Ooh.
Tonight I've got pasta, I guess another tomorrow and the next day as well, <laughs> I don't know why I said tonight, and a little chunk of salami which I'll cut up in a little bit. So yeah, that's my meals for this trip pretty much, um, pasta and rice, I've also got a few ration packs that a friend of mine, John, gave me. Thanks John much love um, so yeah that's why I got three gas bottles because it is a lot of boiling water I wanted water based products because I knew that I was near plenty of streams and locks and rivers so I knew I had water but it's boiling it that's the hard part now So I'm going to have that now. I'm on the road again. This is day five, I believe. I've lost track at the moment. Um, I, I think I stopped counting past day three, or I tried to count, but I couldn't do it. Um, anyway, just along the road, walking down. Absolutely lovely day, not raining. A bit cloudy, but at least it's not raining. The wind is uh, really settled as well, so it's great. The plan for today is just hike until I feel dead pretty much um, just hike anywhere I've got um, about three days until I stay in the mountain hut that I've booked out for two nights I wanted to stay there so I've got somewhere to um, dry all my gear off um, I thought that was an eagle then it. Such a small world, I was hiking down earlier, I just packed up my all my stuff, was about to walk on the road again and I bumped into a friend of mine, so it was crazy, He, we both live down south and um, it's weird how at the same time we're both in Scotland, it was crazy and he is kayaking down this river so I think he's doing some of the rapids back up where I was camping because um, it does flow really fast through there but yeah it's crazy seeing him here really weird Stunning. The further I walk down this road, the better the views get. I had to take a layer off because I'm getting quite hot now, but 
It is so pretty. I'm loving it. I've been walking for about an hour and a half now. I will probably walk a little bit more. I have to watch calories as I don't have loads of calories. And I'm hiking with that backpack. So I'm going to keep walking and then find somewhere to camp. So I found my camp spot for tonight, not too shabby, yeah I'm just next to the road, I've got water for my food later and also for drinking and there's also trees which I haven't seen in ages so I might think about having a fire because there's old logs in that pit and I could just get some twigs and I've got a lighter with me so that that could work I need to dry off some of my clothes everything is just damp and wet so this is dried out a little bit today so is my waterproof trousers uh, my boots are wet my socks and um, other bits of clothing and also my tent so drying day. So I don't think I've mentioned I carry the blue camelback on my front and then I have this on my back so I've got two bags. The reason I bought two bags was because one for all my camera equipment and things I need to grab really quickly so in there it's just easier for my front so I put like my phone and my camera goes in there my GoPro water and then also got money and my water filter so just bits like that and then in here is just everything else so like my clothes my cook system my sleep system my tent all in there. So I think it's come to about 23 kg plus um, the weight of the water on my tent is added to it and then the bottle, got a one litre Nalgene bottle with me. And it's the first day I've had signal as well. I haven't had signal for a long time. This is the bag my Van Gogh goes in. This is it not compressed and it just fits on the outside of my bag. There's two clips that it can hang on. I'm just gonna set this up now. The pole got a little bit salted. I put black tape on it which I'll show you in a minute. So this is where it's cracked and it's on a corner so the repair kit comes with a little pole like that size that just slides on um, in case of big snaps it just fixes it but I've just had to put tape over this and just hope it holds till and see me home but yeah I can't put the pole on because it's on the, the bend so Tape is my only option at the moment. So I've got some of my gear in here just trying to dry it out. If you look at my loadout video you can see the equipment that I, I've taken. All my sleeping bag and clothes are still dry which was the main thing. That was the priority. I've got my map book and all my thing for my flight and my coach, my stove, my gas, my cook pot, my electronics, more electronics, my roll mat, wipes, toilet roll, towel, bars and my filter. Oh no, my filter's not in there anymore. And then over there's like my wash kit and then in here's clothes and my sleeping bag. So yeah, I'm going to set up my 
sleep system for the night and uh, I've just gone and got some wood that was in a existing fire pit I'm going to use that for a fire to dry some stuff out So I've just put on these shoes that I bought like camp sh for camp shoes. So these are so comfy and it feels so good not having my boots on and walking around in these. It's like not wearing shoes. These are water shoes and um, yeah, they're really lightweight but they've also got a sole on the bottom. You don't damage your feet. I've worn them before. But um, it's the first time this trip and it feels so good. It was definitely worth the little amount of weight to carry these. This primer stove has been an absolute gem. I would recommend if you're getting this to get a similar pot that's supposed to fit on here. This is just the Pathfinder pot that I've had for years. It's stainless steel so it's a bit heavier but that means I can put it on a fire in case I did run out of gas. Um, but as you can see it doesn't fit that well onto the stove. So I have to 
watch it when I'm cooking or heating water on there. Rice and salami tonight, so mixing it up a little bit from pasta and rice. Pasta and rice? No, pasta and salami. Yeah, I think the time is six o'clock now. My fire's still ticking over, drying whatever's left to dry. Um, I've sorted through my food and everything else and it's just nice to just have a whole day without rain just to dry off. You really appreciate what it's like um, when it's dry and you do appreciate having a house as well. Living in a tent for two weeks is going to be really different. Um, challenging but really, really nice, really free and cheap as well, a cheap way to live, a lifestyle to live. I've been looking and there's loads of people in vans doing van life and that's something that I'd love to do one day is to get myself a van and tour around Scotland, um, Wales, Europe, Scandinavia, maybe America. I'd love to just do that. That is a real dream of mine. Just um, always moving, always on the road, never being stagnant, staying in one place. I'd like to keep moving for a long period of time and travel, see this beautiful world that we live in while we're here. So I'd love to do that. Definitely a dream of mine. So anyway, I'm going to eat this. I'm so hungry now. I've eaten porridge and a chunk of cheese and a cliff bar today. And I've probably hiked about four miles with that bag. So, and a lot of it was uphill. So I've burnt a lot of calories and then collecting firewood and the rocks and pitch in my tent. So this dinner is well deserved. Cheers guys.